Okay guys, we're going to have a look at solving uh, linear equations using the flowchart method. So before we get started, we have to remember bid mass. Okay, so this is the order we need to do things. Brackets, indices, division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. So when we're thinking about the flowchart, we have to bear those things in mind. So let's start off with the first one then. So we've got 3x plus 4 equals 25. Now when we say solve, that means we're trying to find out the value of x. What is the value of x? And like I said, we're going to use a flow chart to do this. So we start off with the x, and we ask ourselves, what do we do to x? We go to our bid mass. Well, currently we're timesing by 3, so 3x means we're timesing by 3, and we're adding 4. So go to our bid mass. Multiplication is before addition. So we're going to be timesing by 3 first, then we're going to be adding 4, and we're going to get our answer of 25. Okay, so that's the flow chart describing what's going on here. To solve it, i.e. to go back to find out the value of x, we just reverse it, and we do the opposite. So instead of adding 4, we take away 4. Instead of timesing by 3, we divide by 3. And then we get back to x. Now, don't forget to actually work out the value of x, because obviously that's the idea. 25, take away 4, is 21, divided by 3 is 7. So x is 7, and you can check that is correct by substituting this value back into your equation. So 3 times 7 is 21, plus 4, 25, yes, it works. So let's have a look at this one again. I'm going to try and work out what x is. Currently I've got x and I'm dividing it by 3 and I'm taking away 4. So I go over to bid mass. Division is above subtraction, so I'm going to divide by 3 first. Then I'm going to take away 4 and that leaves me with 10. So to go backwards, 10, I do the opposite. I add 4. Then I go over here and I do the opposite and I times by 3 and I get back to x. So 10 plus 4 is 14 times by 3, or 10 times 3 is 30, 4 times 3 is 12, add them together, we have 42. Okay. Next one over here. Now we've got x plus 5 divided by 6 equals 7. So we have to be careful here. We start off with x, but what are we doing to it first? Well, technically the division comes before the addition, but I can't actually do that division until I've solved what's on top. So in this case, I have to do x plus 5 first before I can then divide by 6, and then, of course, I have my answer of 7. So going backwards, 7 times by 6 take away 5, and I get back to x. So 7 times 6, 42, take away 5, 37. Okay. Now you can go straight into the flow chart when you have a brackets question, however I recommend that you expand the brackets first, because sometimes the numbers can get a little bit horrible. If you've got a calculator it's not a problem, but in a non-calculator you want to make it as easy as possible. So I would expand this first, so 4 on the outside x minus 3 at the top, 4 times x is 4x, 4 times minus 3 is minus 12. So I'm just going to expand that bracket first to 4x minus 12. So 4x minus 12 equals 18, and then it's exactly the same type of question I had at the start. So x times by 4, take away 12 equals 18. We go backwards, plus 12, divide by 4, and we get x. So 18 plus 12 is 30, then divide by 4, so half it and half it again, 
So half of 30 is 15, half of 15 is 7.5. Okay, so those, those examples. However, harder questions are like this, where we can't use the flow chart straight away because I have a 5x here and a 3x here. So I've got x's on both sides of the equals. Now, to deal with this, I have to get rid of one of them. And the way to do that is to look at which one is the smallest one and get rid of that one. So 3x is smaller than 5x, so that's the one I'm going to get rid of. So to get rid of 3x from this side, it's quite simple. I do the opposite and I take away 3x from this side. But to keep it equal, whatever I do to this side, I have to do to this side. So I'm going to take away 3x from that side as well. So 5x take away 3x leaves me with 2x. I've still got that minus 2. On the right-hand side, 3x take away 3x is nothing, and I'm left with 18. So once you've dealt with the problem of having x's on both sides, you can then go into your flow chart. This is just like our first example. So I do my times 2 first, then I take away 2, and then I get 18. I go backwards, 18 plus 2, opposite, opposite of times 2, divide 2, and I get back to my value x. So 18 plus 2 is 20, divided by 2 is 10. And again, you can test to see if that's right. 5 times 10 is 50, take away 2 is 48, so that would be 48. 3 times 10 is 30, plus 18 is 48, and of course 48 equals 48. So you can always test to see if it's correct. This one here, again, I need to spot which one is smaller. This one or this one. Now most people will go, oh, 2 is smaller than 4. Be careful. This is minus 4x, and this is plus 2x. So minus 4 is actually the smaller one here, so be careful with that. And to get rid of it from the left-hand side, I do the opposite. So I add 4x to this side. And just like before, you must do it to both sides. So I add 4x to both sides. On the left-hand side, that will leave me with minus 6. 2x plus 4x is 6x plus 18. And now you can do the flow chart again. Don't be put off by the fact the x is on this side. It makes zero difference. You just straight up flow chart. So x times by 6 plus 18, and that equals minus 6. So minus 6, take away 18, divided by 6, gets me back to x. So minus 6 minus 18 is minus 24. Minus 24 divided by 6 is minus 4. So hopefully that helps solving equations using the flowchart.